Hello and welcome to my reading log for July of 2023 and for this month I read 28 volumes which is one more volume than what I read in June so it was a slight improvement but yeah we're going to get on with the 28 volumes that I read and the first thing I read this month which I read on the first what is it Spy Family volume 9 and I really like this volume this was a good volume my favourite chapters were the ones with Bond, where he got wet, and the one where Becky comes to visit Anya's house and is trying to get Lloyd to notice her. They were my favourite two chapters. They were very good. Yeah. Everyone probably knows what Spy Family is at this point, but yeah. This was a good volume. It also ended off the cruise ship arc. Yeah, the beginning of this volume ended off the cruise ship arc, and then we went into the more, like single chapter stories and, and yeah they were there were some good ones amongst them yeah yeah the, this was a very good volume i enjoyed it definitely some funny chapters and of course i always love bond bond is great how can you not like bond he's just a cute fluffy dog he's very cute so yeah a good volume of spy family Next thing I read, which was on the second, I, I gave that volume four stars. On the second of the month, I read Karun Generic Romance Volume 3. I think I gave this one three and a half stars. But yeah, I do enjoy Karun Generic Romance, and this is another good volume. We kind of got a few of the questions answered from the previous volume, but then there's more questions added. There's this guy, and he has like a weird snake tongue and he's adding like more questions and then obviously there's still the questions with her and the guy she works with and what's going on there and I don't really want to say much because spoilers but yeah it was a good volume as it answered a couple questions and then added more questions so yeah I'm looking forward to reading volume four to see if there's any more answers to those questions but this is a good it's a good series it's a sane and rom-com sci-fi series and it's certainly not generic unlike the title suggests it's set in Kowloon walled city which was a real place in hong kong before it was torn down and she has a crush on the guy she works with at the real estate office but then there's some she finds some stuff out about him and his past and herself and it's quite interesting yeah moving on on the um third i read a sign a sign not a sign of affection my secret affection volume two i gave this three stars because it's a cute story i enjoyed it as a whole but the ending was kind of weak it, didn't it wasn't that satisfying of an ending so this is a two volume shoujo romance about a world in which a meteor struck earth and everyone is now gay and after the meteor struck his grandfather was in space at the time so he was the only one left unaffected so he was like the last heterosexual person on the planet and he was he kind of felt alone because of that and then she is his childhood friend and she finds out that she has feelings for him and she kind of confides in the grandfather a bit but the grandfather he's as at the start of the series he has passed away so she's kind of t coming to her terms with the fact she has feelings for a boy and she doesn't know whether the boy is actually gay as well or not because she assumes he is because of the meteor but they don't actually know so yeah the ending to this one was kind of weak so it, it was a cute story overall but it's very short and i said the ending wasn't the best so yeah i don't know if this one will be staying in my collection long term i am keeping it for now but if i ever need the space this will be one of the first ones i'd probably unhaul because although it it was cute i enjoyed it it wasn't anything phenomenal 
and the ending wasn't that good next i didn't read anything on the fourth don't know why but on the fifth i read a condition called love volume two which i also gave three stars i liked this volume more than i liked volume one but i still really do not like hannah nikon the, like, especially the way he was behaving at the beginning of the volume and like some of the comments he was making later on or what he's talking about it's not much of a spoiler so I'll mention it there is one point where she's on the roof and she's a bit upset about something and he mentioned that he realised something was up because she only ate like one bread instead of two breads and he's like how do you know I always eat two breads and he said oh because i'm always observing you and like then she mentioned how that's kind of creepy and then i'm like yeah it's it's more than kind of creepy and but then she's kind of just brushes it off and i'm like i really don't like this dude he's he's very has stalkerish tendencies obviously he's not as bad as the dude from love and heart he's not on that level but I'm still not a big fan of him. He might improve as the series goes on. He might reduce in these tendencies. But I still really don't like him. And his attitude towards the other people around him that aren't her as well, I wasn't very keen on. But yeah, I will continue the series. I don't know if it's one I want to keep up to date with or whether it's just one I want to pick up a volume now and again to see how it goes. I know there is an anime coming out next year. Maybe I'll watch that. See how that is. But yeah, I did write this more than the first volume, but Han and I, I still really don't like him. Next up, I have... On the 6th, I read Tokyo Ravens Volume 3, and I think I gave this one three stars as well. So we... This is... It's an action shonen series that was published in g fantasy and it's about aliens live among these everyone in tokyo the the government knows about them most of them are harmless but occasionally you get one who does want to disturb the peace and that's where this organization comes in and they like deal with the illegal aliens that come to earth without paperwork and stuff and this guy has he meets this other guy, Akira, he meets, I think, shows his name, who's in his class, and they kind of get involved. And then he has an encounter with an alien, and then he has to join this organization and work with Sho in the organization. And you do learn some more stuff about Sho and his past in this volume. And I think they may be introducing time travel in the next few volumes, which could be interesting. But you find out that his father used to work in this organization and then there's questions about him and like who's his mother his mother's never mentioned and his like there's questions about the father as well and obviously you find out more about show in this volume but there's still some stuff going on and interested to find out more about it so next on the seventh of this month i read orochi volume four i gave this a Three and a half stars out of seven. I read this on the eighth. No, the seventh. I read this on the seventh. So yeah, I like the short stories in this volume better than I like the ones in volume three, I reckon. Volume three was probably the weakest volume, but yeah, I did enjoy the stories in this one more than volume three, but I think the stories in the first couple of volumes were definitely the best ones. This is a horror series about a woman called Orochi who has supernatural powers and her... And she observes different people in different situations and most of the situations turn, like, horrific. So this one contained a story called Eyes, which was the shorter of the two stories, and then Blood, which was the longer of the two stories. I like both of these stories, but I'd say they, I preferred the stories that were in the first couple of volumes, but yeah, these ones were still good, and as I say... These stories were better than the ones in volume three. So for the first story is about a blind girl and a guy who breaks into her house and murders somebody and her father gets the blame for it. 
and now she's trying to prove who the real killer was. And the second story is about two sisters. One of them was treated well, the other one was kind of treated badly, and it, 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 and Orochi's kind of observing them throughout their lives. We kind of following the like the younger of the two sisters. So yeah, I enjoyed this volume, and it's the final volume too. Next up on the eighth, I read my coworker has a secret volume one. This is another two volume series. This one's a Joe say it's an office romance. I gave this one a seven. It was three and a half stars. But you follow. This woman here, who is a secret otaku, she is obsessed with this, he's like a drama, not a drama, he's a musical actor, he acts in like musical theatre and stuff like that, and she's obsessed with him, but she keeps it a secret from her co-workers due to a comment one of them made a while ago about not liking people who like idols and stuff. Anyway, she tells this, she tells this guy who she meets in the park after she he basically, he feeds her in the park basically because her sandwich was stolen by a bird. And she ends up telling him, but then it turns out he's actually just started working at her company. So now he's, he's like, you've got to keep this a secret. And he agrees. But then obviously something happens and her landlord doesn't inform her that she has to move out. So she has nowhere to go. So she ends up living with this guy and... The part in this where he she is touring his apartment was quite funny. This volume in general was quite funny, but I really liked the part where he was giving her a tour of the apartment <laughs> and all the stuff he had in the apartment and the fridge, which had like an LED fish tank on the front of it. Yeah, I really liked this volume. It was a lot of fun to read. I would recommend this if you want like a short comedy romance Jose. It, this, is, this is a good one. I haven't read volume 2 yet. I think it is out. So I'll be looking forward to the second volume. Next up, I read on the 9th, To Your Eternity, volume 18, which I gave three stars. Th this ends the Karen arc. Now, I haven't read a volume of this in a long time because it was on so quite slowly releasing now. But I don't remember half the stuff that happened in volume 17. So when I started reading this, I was a bit confused. But it, it kind of started coming back to me as I was reading. So yeah, I figured this volume ends the current arc. And then we're going to start into a new arc now. Which might be like closing to the end. Because I think it's going to be like some sort of big confrontation with the knockers. Kind of like we had at the end of the uh, Bon arc. Before we went into this modern day arc. But now there's going to be like another confrontation in this modern day arc. I think I'm ready for this series to end now. It's gone on for quite a while. So yeah, I'm hoping the next arc turns out to be like the last one. I still, still enjoy it, but I think it, I'm ready for it to end now. I, do, I did enjoy the anime quite a lot though. And I will be watching the third season when it drops. Next, I read, on the 10th, I read Rainbow Days Volume 2, and then I'll talk about these two together, because on the 16th, I read Volume 3, so I'm just going to pull that out of the stack and have these two be together. Yeah. I wasn't keen on Volume 1 of Rainbow Days, I thought it was a bit boring. I gave both of these three stars, by the way. No, actually... I gave volume 2 3 stars, but I gave this one 3.5 stars. Because I did enjoy, enjoy volumes 2 and 3 more than I enjoyed volume 1. It kind of picked up a bit. I started enjoying it more. It's still not a favourite of mine. I'm probably not going to keep up to date with it. I'm just going to grab volumes every now and again when I see them. But yeah, but this story, it's a high school size of life that follows four boys who are good friends with each other and their high school lives and their romances and... Not all of them are good. I, I like the main guy and his, the girl he likes. I like those two. But I'm not very keen on any of the other three couples. And I'm very not keen on one of the girls. I forget her name, but she's very annoying. This girl here. With the purple hair. 
she's really annoying and I don't like her much at all. Like, I, I quite like her and this girl as well, but I really don't like her. <laughs> so yeah, the only relationship I'm really bothered about is the one between the main guy and her. These, him, her, her and her boyfriend, they're okay, I, I, I don't like her. And then the other guy, this guy here, has met someone in this third volume who he's probably going to end up pursuing a relationship with. And I don't know what they're like yet because obviously I haven't, they haven't actually had any development between them yet. But I might end up liking that relationship as well. But so far I'm only that bothered about one of the relationships, which is why I'm probably not going to keep up to date with this series. But I did enjoy these two volumes more than I enjoyed volume one. So that's Rainbow Days 2 and 3. On next I read on the I didn't read anything on the 11th. I read on the 12th I read my special one volume 2 and this volume goes into the backstory of the idol and why he doesn't really want a close relationship with anyone and his backstory was quite sad. If you've read it, you know what I mean. But uh, she's fallen for him and she wants to try and pursue a relationship with him. But he's kind of trying to get her to back off because he doesn't really want to enter into another close relationship after what happened in his past. But yeah, it, it was a good volume and I did enjoy it. And this is, I think, a 10 volume long series. But only the first five volumes covered these two and volume six to ten as a different couple. There is a black haired idol in here who is in the same group as him and I'm pretty sure volumes six to ten follow him and his relationship. Let's see if I can find him. He was in this volume. I think yeah, him. I'm pretty sure the latter half of the series follows him. And I don't recognise the girl on the cover, so I don't think she's been introduced yet. But yeah, I enjoyed this volume. I do, obviously, I will continue reading this to volume 5, and then if I like the second relationship, I will finish the series as well. I don't know how I'm going to feel about the second relationship, though, because the black hair guy, he's not, one, he's not a favourite. <laughs> Yeah, I did enjoy this volume. Next up, on the 13th, I read... I gave that a 7, by the way. Kage Sama Lovers War, volume 25. I gave this one an 8. This is entering into, like, the final arc now. We're nearing the end. I think there's 27 volumes in total. No, 28. There's 28 volumes in total because there's three volumes left. Because I know that volumes 26... Volumes... No, volume 26 has a regular cover. And then volumes 27 and 28 have like a combined cover. And that's the final one. Or is it 29? <laughs> I'm confusing myself now. It might be 29 volumes, but... However many volumes it has, it's not far off ending. And the final two volumes, like the cover connects. Yeah, I enjoyed this volume. It goes into more about Kagi's family and her situation. And how they're planning on helping her out and getting her back. And... Yeah, I like this volume. And we also had more, uh, some more, like, development between you and Miko as well, which I enjoyed. So yeah, I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series and getting to see an ending, because I do very enjoy this series. Next up, I read on the 14th, but I read Sugar Apple Fairytale Volume 1. This was the manga. And I found this to be disappointing. <laughs> I love the light novel for this series. I love the anime. It's one of my new favourite animes and light novels. And then I picked up the manga. And first up, after looking at the cover, I'm not keen on the character designs. Like, I'm not keen on Xiao's design. I much prefer his design in the light novel. And I'm also not keen on Mithril's design either. I'm just used to how they look in the anime and the light novel and seeing them look this way. I just didn't like it. So yeah, that's one issue I had with this adaptation. The second issue I had was the pacing. Like, the pacing in this 
was worse than it was in the anime. And the anime was only 12 episodes. So I don't know how that could have happened, but the anime had better pacing than what this manga volume had. And obviously the white novel's pacing's great because it's a white novel, they can fit a lot more in. Maybe when they started writing this, they didn't know how many volumes they would actually be given, so they tried to cram as much as possible into this first volume to get to a good point where they could end it with, like, a cliffhanger where you'll be quite, very excited to grab the next one and find out what happens. So they try to cram as much in to this volume to get to that point, and that, combined with the art style, just meant that I just didn't enjoy this as much as I did the right novel, which is disappointing because I love Sugar Apple Fairy Tale and I wanted to like this manga adaptation, but I just I just didn't really. So there was a short story at the end written by the author of the right novel, but it's only like two pages long and I don't think it's worth getting this volume of manga just to read this two page short story. It's just about them getting a caterpillar off the seat of the wagon. So yeah, I definitely highly recommend getting the light novel or watching the anime over the manga adaptation. So yeah, there is actually a new one. There's three manga adaptations now. There was the original one, which was only two volumes long. Then there was this one. And now there's a new one starting in Floss Comics, which is just now starting. I think because of the anime, because both this and the other manga adaptation came out before the anime started, and now I think they're starting this new adaptation because the of the anime right maybe bringing more attention to the series, they decided to do a third manga adaptation, and maybe if that one gets good, they'll bring it over to English and I'll write that one better, but yeah, this one was disappointing, so... If you want to get into Sugar Apple Fairy Tale, I don't suggest trying the manga. I suggest either the anime or the light novel over this. So yeah, it was, it was a disappointment. And I'm not continuing it and I might just unhaul that volume. Next on the 15th, I read Cheeky Fat Volume 6 and I think I gave this a 7, 4, 3 and a half stars. Yeah, I enjoy Cheeky Brat. It's a fun high school romance with basketball elements and the guy in it reminds me a bit of um, Usui from Maid Summer and she reminds me a bit of Mazaki from Maid Summer. So, and the basketball elements remind me a bit of Waiting for Spring. But yeah, this is a, it's a good... I like this series. I don't like the dude who keeps trying to get right between them he's annoying and I know he's going to be in it like for the entire run even once they graduate high school because she's close to graduating high school now I know this guy follows her for right through the entire series but I can put up with that because I know I still like the series despite that like I don't particularly like love triangles they're not my favorite thing but I can put up with them if I do like the series enough so yeah, although I do find the love triangle annoying, like this dude, I am gonna like I do still enjoy the series, and I do still like it, and I did enjoy this volume as well. Next up, I read. Oh, it took me two days to read for some reason. No, actually, the next thing I read was Rain the Days Volume Three, but I already talked about that. So on the seventeenth and the eighteenth, I read Red River Volume Twenty One. So, yeah, it's a monthly Red River read. I try to get a volume of this read every month because I try to read through the haul that I buy every month and once I finish that, I read a volume of this and Inubaka and then I'll go on to the next stack and once I finish that stack, I'll read another Red River and another Inubaka. And I've been kind of doing that since last year. But yeah, I really enjoy Red River. It's, it's a super good series. It's a classic shoujo isekai about a girl called Yuri who gets... Pulled into another world by a by the Taiwanana, but it's quite the queen of the land in the Hittite Empire in ancient Tur Mesopotamia, Turkey, something like that. And now she's trying to get home, but she needs the help of Prince Kyle in order to do so. And obviously things go from there, and this is 21 volumes in, so I don't really want to mention 
anything that happens in this volume because this far into the series it's all going to be spoilers like i'll just mention that they're currently in egypt and there's a war and that's all i'll say but yeah i do enjoy red river and i'm looking forward to getting into read volume 22 which i think is the last volume that is set in egypt And obviously next after that volume, as I already said, I read volume 12 of Inabaka. I'm coming to an end with the series because I only have the first 14 volumes. There is 17 available in English, 22 in total, but we never got the last volumes in English because I think Viz dropped the series. But Inabaka is a dog manga. It's about a girl, Sarugi, who starts working in the pet shop Wuffles after her dog mounts the owner's dog and he, there's a, like, a risk of pregnancy and she has to like pay him back by working in the shop but she comes to love the shop and all the puppies that they have in there and she really enjoys working there this volume continues the dog dancing storyline from the previous volume where she's teaching the lupin who is her mutt he's like a shiba looking dog but he's actually a mutt and she, she's teaching him how to dance and taking part in this dog dancing competition. And then the last, like, four chapters started up the next storyline. But that storyline is kind of spoilery, so I'm not going to mention anything from that one. But that storyline will go, it will go into it fully in the next volume. So, yeah. I'll just say it involves this little Pomeranium on the front called Chesney. So that's Inabaka. Next, I read on the 20th, I read I Hear the Sunspot Four Seasons, which is the new instalment in I Hear the Sunspot's franchise, which as this is one of my favourite BL, one of my favourite BLs. I love this series a lot, and I really enjoyed this volume. And I was like, so thankful when Kohei actually did something <laughs> that not a lot of characters actually do. So there is a scene in this where Kohei's ex-girlfriend, he kind of runs into her again and she's being stalked by someone. And she asks Kohei to pretend to be her boyfriend in order to like get him off her back. And in every other manga I've read in that sort of situation, they always say yes and there's always a misunderstanding and the couple always has a fight. But in this one, he actually turns her down and says no. So I was very happy about that. But yet they still somehow end up having a fight. <laughs> but yeah, I was glad. It was very really refreshing to see him actually turn her down because normally in that situation and every other series that have had that situation that I've read, they would say yes, which would lead to misunderstandings. So I really like that about this volume. And also Kohei is job hunting. He's getting to the end of college and he's looking for a job now. And obviously Taichi has been given kind of an apprentice to kind of teach in his job. And yeah, it was a good volume and it ended on a cliffhanger and I'm looking forward to reading more. Next I read on the 21st I read Vampire Dawn Toys volume 10 and I'm surprised this wasn't the final volume because this could have been the final volume they could have just left it here the series could have ended here because but it's not going to they've started up a completely new storyline like the thing that the series was about has happened. The Like, the thing they were aiming towards throughout the entire series has happened now, and, like, this is a good place to end it. You could just leave it here, but no. They're continuing it. And I'm going to keep reading it, because although this series is complete and utter trash, I still enjoy it to an extent. <laughs> so, yeah, they could have ended it here, but the authors kept it going and introduced a new character, and there's going to be stuff going on with that I guess but I don't know where the story's gonna go from here because I say the main goals that they were aiming towards have been accomplished and the, yeah if the series goes on for too much longer and it starts getting to complete shit and no redeeming party stage I will probably drop it but for now I will keep going with it but this is a good place to like it would have been a good place for it to end if they didn't if it wasn't for like the last like two pages literally the last 
two pages. If they'd left those two pages out, they literally could have ended it there. Now, it, on the 22nd, I read A Sign of Affection 46, which is um very good volume. I love this series so much, and I'm excited that this is getting an anime, so yeah. It's a college romance about with a deaf girl and a boy who's well-travelled, and in this volume, she, Utsunomi sent her a message which kind of has information about his past in it because she asked him why she he liked traveling so much so he sent her a message and explained stuff about his past but then he mentioned that he went on a plane when he was seven years old and something happened on that plane that changed his perspective of things and then he doesn't say what that event was and now you left the whole volume wondering what happened on that plane so now I just really want to know what happened on that plane because it's a very cute series as well. I really love it. But I really want to know what happened on that plane. And I don't even know if we're going to find out anytime soon. But yeah, a very enjoyable series. Next up, on the 23rd, I read My Happy Marriage Volume 3 of the manga adaptation, obviously. This is a good manga adaptation, unlike Shrug Level Fairy Tale. <laughs> this follows the light novel very well, it doesn't really leave anything out, the pacing's good. And the art style's nice too, I do actually like the art style in this adaptation. So this volume, we've finished volume one of the light novel now, which is also where episode six of the anime is probably going to finish volume one of the light novel as well. And we're going into volume two of the light novel territory for like the second half of this volume. And volume four is probably going to be the last volume for a while because I think the series was on hiatus after volume four. I think it's come off hiatus again now, but I don't think volume five's out in Japan yet. So volume four might be the last one of the manga we get for a while, but it's disappointing. But since I read the light novels, it's not too much of a devastation because... I already know what happens into halfway through volume four, which I'm currently reading. Yeah, this one's a good adaptation with nice art and nice pacing, and the series is just brilliant in general in all formats. Whether you want to consume light novel, manga, anime, they're all just as good as each other, and I recommend any of them. The series is just awesome. Which is more, this is more reason why I was disappointed in the Sugar Apple Fairy Tale adaptation after reading a good light novel adaptation then, and then reading that one. On the 24th of July, which was my birthday, I read Cherry Magic Volume 7. No particular reason I didn't, I didn't particularly choose to read this one just because it was my birthday. It was just picked up, I just picked it out the pile being like, I'll read this today. I do really like Cherry Magic, it's super cute, it's an... and I've just realised I've not been given my scores. I gave Vampire Dormitory, I gave, when did I last give a score? I can't remember. But Red River was four stars, Inabaka was three and a half, I Hear the Sunspot was four, Vampire Dormitory was three, Time of Affection was four, My Happy Marriage was, I think I gave it five. And then Cherry Magic, I gave it three and a half. Right up to date on scores now <laughs> but yeah this uh, is, it's a cute office romance bl with two adult characters he can he ha he since he's a virgin at 30 years old he develops these powers in which he can read the minds of whoever he's touching and he finds out his boss fancies him his boss is, he's not his boss he's his co-worker fancies him and has for a while and he reads his thoughts and his thoughts can be quite amusing but yeah something happens in this volume which requires this <laughs> anyway it happened in the actually it was the end of the last volume i think it happened but yeah now i know why this was put on the volumes because there wasn't anything explicit before volume six but yeah i enjoyed this volume and i'm looking forward to finding out what happens next i don't know if the series has ended or not because it seems to be like maybe drawing to some sort of conclusion soon Oops, I think I just knocked the camera. Next. We're getting there, we're getting there. I think there's seven left. 
from the Red Fog Volume 4. I read on the 25th and I gave it a 7 for three and a half stars. So yeah, I enjoyed this volume, but there was some questions that were never really, not so much not answered, but not gone into. Because Volume 5 is the final volume and I don't know how they're going to deal with everything in one more volume. And then I also looked up and it turns out Volume 5 is set several years after Volume 4 and he is now like a young adult. He's not 12 years old anymore or something like. They introduced the storyline with this guy who is the um, reader of the organisation that he is currently working for and they introduced a storyline with him involving experiments and then they kind of never went into it. They introduced it in the end of the previous volume. And there was two boys, and we never see those two boys again in this volume. I mean, the experiments kind of aren't mentioned anymore. And then, it, like, they, he suddenly starts looking for his mother because he finds out his mother is still alive. And then we get backstory, and then the end of the volume happens, and something happens, and I won't spoil it. But then I'm like, but what about? guy and the experiments isn't that going to be talked about anymore what happened to those two boys or about the girl from the previous volume what happened to her but apparently none of that's going to be answered because the next volume several years later and he's now grown up so i don't know if it's going to go into that with him as an adult dealing with like that sort of stuff or whether it it's just going to be dropped and never mentioned again. As I say, I do enjoy this series. I do think this series is good. But I do just kind of like gloss over things and forget about them. Like I was interested in these experiments and it just kind of glossed over it and never mentioned it again. And it's not the first time the series has done something like this. So I do like the series. It does tend to like just do that occasionally. <laughs> I would say with it being such a short series, it just didn't have time to explore all that it could have explored. And it probably would have been better if it was longer and they gave it more time. But yeah, it's still an enjoyable series for what it is. It just wish it could have actually explored that part of it more than what it did. Because the majority of this volume was just about the mother. Which would have been fine if the series then kept going longer. Next, on the 25th or 26th, I read for the kid I saw in my dreams volume 10, which is, I gave an 8, 4 stars. This is the penultimate volume. The last volume is going to be the final volume. I mean, of course the last volume is the final volume. <laughs> the next volume is going to be the final volume. This is, so yeah, this is the penultimate volume. I, this is a mystery series, so there's not much I can maybe mention without spoilers. But... A lot of this, the majority of this volume was flashback about the fireman and his past. So, yeah, the beginning of this volume, you can see all the back pages, which was all the flashbacks. So, yeah. So, the fireman is the, like, the guy that Senri is after because when he was a little boy, he broke into his house and killed his parents and his little brother, his twin brother. And now he wants revenge against the fireman and he's tracking him down. Like, like this volume goes into the fireman's past. The majority of this volume was his backstory and when he was a child and growing up and stuff. And that was very really interesting. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading the final volume of this. I do enjoy this series quite a bit. I enjoy most of, uh, of what I've read from Kay Sanabe, which is like half of Erased and Ironed in a Bottle. So yeah, very really good mystery like suspense series and I'm looking forward to reading the final volume and next up on the 27th I read so I'm a witch and my crush wants me to make a love potion volume 2 which I gave a 7 this was a cute volume we, have, we follow this guy this witch and this guy and this witch has a crush on him ever since she met him in the city, like, a few years back, but he obviously doesn't remember meeting her because she had a hood up and her face covered, and... You know, he Anyway, he 
goes to her and asks her to make him a love potion and she's like a bit devastated because she's like if he wants a love potion it's probably for him it means he likes somebody else so she's trying to keep him around as much as possible by sending him on errands to get all the ingredients but she'll only tell him what ingredients he needs one at a time so he has to go get them one at a time which is keeping him there longer and yeah it's a good series it was cute I don't know how long it's going to be because it's based off a light novel and the light novel's only two volumes long. And they say if they do like three volumes per light novel is typical. It might only be six volumes long, seven at the most. But yeah, it's a, this is a cute one and I do like it and it was good. It's, they're not very fat though. Yeah, it's a, it's not an isekai, it's just fantasy. It's, it, it, I really like it. But some of the, I can find some of the names a bit hard to pronounce though. But that's probably just me. Because I'm bad with names in general. Anyway, just four more to go. On the 28th, I read a BL called Ogi Summer Break and I gave this two stars or a four because I didn't much like this. I, I liked Ogi. I liked Ogie, but I didn't really like this guy. And something happened in chapter two. Like, like, chapter one was perfectly fine. We have Ogie. We were introduced to him. We're told. Like, we're introduced to Ogie. Ogie tends to dress a bit more feminine than most boys do. And he meets this guy who is blind, so he can't, like, see what his fashion sense or anything like that. And he has a crush on him, and they start hanging out together as friends. Like, one of Ogie's friends just walks up to him one day and is like, hey, this guy wants to be your friend. And he's like, okay, we'll be friends. And the first chapter was fine. And then the second chapter happened. And normally I like to try to not spoil things. But I am going to talk about this. I'm not going to spoil it beyond chapter 2. But if you don't want to hear hear any spoilers for chapter 2 of this series. Then I recommend skipping ahead to you no longer seeing me holding it on the screen. But anyway, we get into chapter 2. What's this guy's name again? Um, Shinya. Shinya invites Ogi round to his house. To hang out. And then he goes into his bedroom pulls out his phone with a porn video on it and is like we're going to act this out because I can't see what's happening on the screen so I want to act it out with you so I know what's happening so he pushes Ogie to the floor and he gets on top of him and is like put your hands on me where they're putting their hands on each other in the video and Ogie's rightfully weirded out by this but then that's not the worst part the worst part is afterwards he's like I used to do this with my brother, but since he's moved out, I haven't had anyone to do this with yet, so I want you to be his replacement. I'm like, who the fuck does this with their brother? Even, like, even if he is blind, who does that with their brother? Who push, Who makes their brother act out porn scenes with them? It was just very strange. And then Ogie rightfully runs off embarrassed and like what the fuck's just gone on here and then he, he's like calls him up to apologize to him for running away and i'm like you're not the one who should be apologizing here you running away from him was a normal response so yeah that happened in chapter two but then they just continue to be friends and this guy is just very weird. I like Ogie, but this guy is just very weird. Now, I know there's one more volume of this out in English. I don't know if that's the final volume or not. But if volume two is the final volume, I will read it to see how it ends. But if this continues for more than two volumes, I'll probably drop it. <laughs> because, yes, this guy is just... He's rather strange. And, yeah, that happened. Anyway, moving on. 
we're going in to talk about what I read on the 29th, which was the Coast of Valley Task Volume 9, which I gave four stars to, and this is um almost to the point where the anime ended. I really like this volume because it covers the uh, backstory of Vanitas and the this guy. And Vanitas, you know, we, we know that Vanitas was raised by the vampire of the Blue Moon, who was also called Vanitas, and now he's using the book of Vanitas to try and restore vampires' true names in order to get revenge against the original Vanitas. But this volume goes into the backstory of Vanitas' time with the vampire of the Blue Moon and also this kid. And I enjoyed the backstory. I enjoyed the backstory in the anime as well. But I'm just wondering what Vanitas' name was before he was Vanitas. Because Vanitas took on the name Vanitas from the vampire of the Blue Moon, who was also called Vanitas. But what was Vanitas' name before he was Vanitas? Because he must have had one, because he had parents who would have named him. But it's never mentioned what his name was. So maybe that will be revealed in a later volume. But I'm kind of curious as to... Who Vanitas was before he was Vanitas. Because in the whole backstory, they never call Vanitas by his name because he wasn't Vanitas at the time, so he would have had a different name, but I don't know what that name was. He just goes by a number. He was number 69. <laughs> but he must have had a name, but I, it's never revealed what it is as of yet, anyway. So I'm kind of curious about that, but yeah. This was a good volume. Oops. It's steampunk, it's steampunk Vampires in France. And two more. And on the 30th, I read Ladies on Top, Volume 3. I gave this a 7. Now, this volume annoyed me a bit too, but nothing to do with these two. The thing that annoyed me about this volume is we're introduced to a new character, and he's working with him, and he starts showing interest in her. So he goes just goes and straight up tells him she's in a relationship with me which it's like that would have been fine he said he'll back off he said he'd leave her alone but then he decides you know what i like her too much despite being knowing her for like all of two days i'm gonna actually try and pursue a relationship with her because i think she's better off with me than she is with this guy and that just annoyed me because i hate third wheels in love triangles who see a couple that's already in a happy relationship and then tries to break them up because he thinks that they would be better off with them that they're the most annoying type of third wheels in love triangles like it's not so bad when the couple isn't in a relationship yet because then it's like she's whether well, they're not in a relationship they can like pursue them but they're already in a relationship and he knows they're in a relationship and he knows they're happy but he thinks she'll be better off with him, so he's going to pursue her anyway, despite being told that she's already dating somebody else. And I found him to be quite annoying because of that. And the next volume is probably going to be annoying because it's going to go into that more. And I hope she turns him down like in the first chapter. Or else he's going to get really annoying. And yeah, no way, right, land over. Yeah, other than that, this volume was good. It was cute. We get to see more of these two. And obviously, this is Steamship, so there's spicy scenes as well. And uh, yeah, the the manhole in the bazooka bit was quite funny, with them trying to represent what they were doing <laughs> with the manhole in the bazooka. But yeah, other than that character being introduced and him probably going to be an annoying interference in future volumes, I did enjoy this volume. And it's only three more volumes, so... He can't possibly be doing that much damage. Yeah, it's just like a pet peeve of mine, having third wheels come into it and try to break up people who are already in a happy relationship. And those characters just annoy me. Anyway, moving on to something that didn't annoy me, which is I read on the 31st, the final day of the month, I gave it four stars, and that is Queen Carty, volume 17. This was a good volume. We finish off... No, we didn't quite finish off the arc. There was a, a couple of author's notes in this volume that mentioned that the first chapter of volume 18 is going to be the end of this current arc. And then it will obviously go into the next arc. But yeah, this was a very good volume. We found out a bit more about the snakes. And... Yeah. We found out also a 
like a revolution to do with something as well but I won't spoil what that is but yeah there's some more info about the snakes there's sort of a revolution involved revolving around something and then yeah this, this was a good volume I highly enjoyed it and if you're not reading Queen's Quality already then why not it's fantastic it's like it's a super excellent series it's awesome it's very good I can't say any more praise for this because this is like it's in my top like 10 favorite manga of all time I just love it that much it's fantastic and this video has just like gotten to the 50 minute mark so I think I'm going to shut up there and end it anyway I hope you enjoyed this video even if I did get into a couple of lamps in the middle there I hope you enjoyed and I will see you for the next video I do next month and goodbye